Charles Spurgeon's Morning and Evening Devotional for Sunday, June 7, 2020. The Morning Devotional. The key verse is taken from Psalm chapter 97, verse 10. You that love the Lord hate evil. Mr. Spurgeon says, You have good reason to hate evil, for only consider what harm it has already wrought you. Oh, what a world of mischief sin has brought into your heart. Sin blinded you so that you could not see the beauty of the Savior. It made you deaf so that you could not hear the Redeemer's tender invitations. Sin turned your feet into the way of death and poured poison into the very fountain of your being. It tainted your heart and made it deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Oh, what a creature you were when evil had done its utmost with you, before divine grace interposed. You were an heir of wrath even as others. You did run with the multitude to do evil. Such were all of us, but Paul reminds us, but you are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. We have good reason, indeed, for hating evil when we look back and trace its deadly workings. Such mischief did evil do us that our souls would have been lost had not omnipotent love interfered to redeem us. Even now it is an active enemy, ever watching to do us hurt and to drag us to perdition. Therefore, hate evil, O Christian, unless you desire trouble. If you would strew your path with thorns and plant nettles in your death pillow, then neglect to hate evil. But if you would live a happy life and die a peaceful death, then walk in all the ways of holiness, hating evil, even unto the end. If you truly love your Savior and would honor Him, then hate evil. We know of no cure for the love of evil in a Christian like abundant intercourse with the Lord Jesus. Dwell much with him, and it is impossible for you to be at peace with sin. Order my footsteps by your word, and make my heart sincere. Let sin have no dominion, Lord, but keep my conscience clear. The Evening Devotional Be zealous, from Revelation chapter 3, verse 19. Mr. Spurgeon says, if you would see souls converted, if you would hear the cry that kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord, if you would place crowns upon the head of the Savior and His throne lifted high, then be filled with zeal. For, under God, the way of the world's conversion must be by the zeal of the church. Every grace shall do exploits, but this shall be first. Prudence Knowledge, patience, and courage will follow in their places, but zeal must lead the van. It is not the extent of your knowledge, though that is useful. It is not the extent of your talent, though that is not to be despised. It is your zeal that shall do great exploits. This zeal is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. It draws its vital force from the continued operations of the Holy Ghost in the soul. If our inner life dwindles, if our heart beats slowly before God, we shall not know zeal. But if all be strong and vigorous within, then we cannot but feel a loving anxiety to see the kingdom of Christ come, and His will be done on earth, even as it is in heaven. A deep sense of gratitude will nourish Christian zeal, looking to the hole of the pit where we were digged, we find abundant reason why we should spend and be spent for God. And zeal is also stimulated by the thought of the eternal future. It looks with tearful eyes down to the flames of hell, and it cannot slumber. It looks up with anxious gaze to the glories of heaven, and it cannot but be stir itself. It feels that time is short compared with the work to be done, and therefore it devotes all that it has to the cause of its Lord. And it is ever strengthened by the remembrance of Christ's example. He was clothed with zeal, 
as with the cloak. How swift the chariot wheels of duty went with him. He knew no loitering by the way. Let us prove that we are his disciples by manifesting the same spirit of zeal.